Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, I'm excited to announce that we've got Zim VR, virtual reality and Zim, which is great. I've been using virtual reality since the 90s. Lots of helmets, different helmets of different types, made helmets, etc. And so it's really nice to bring them into Zim. Well, let's see what, uh, what we've got going on. So these circles, uh, it's a left and right eye, and this would be in your mobile device. And then you put this in a helmet, like a uh, uh, Google Cardboard or Samsung Gear VR or any of the many, 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 uh, well, just over the holiday season, got a, a VR helmet for $20, $24 or something like that. And it's excellent, very comfortable, and looks great. This effect right here is the best effect I've seen in one of those VR helmets. Um, that's because it's, I think it's because anyway, it's nice and crisp. A lot of the VR that I've been seeing in there, they're trying to either do movies or reality and it just kind of looks a little small and pixelated and blurry or something. But this is really nice and crisp and definitely coming out at you, everybody who's put the helmet on is like, whoa, look at that, you know, spectacular. So uh, let's see how we did that then. We'll, um, over here, here's a bit of code. Uh, VR equals a new VR. So we've got some content and the content is just one of these. And what we do is uh, the content's a container and any of the children of the container can be given a depth. So you give the child a depth property. And then you pass the content in. Here's how it's passing the content into VR and it will clone it, clone the content over to the right hand side, and then it will shift all of the things with depth. It will shift uh, accordingly. So shift the X position according, accordingly. And we can move this thing too. So I'm gonna swipe this and that's, that's what it looks like. That's parallax in there. Can you see? Well, you only see the parallax when it's big. So there it is, the parallax. But as, it, as these things go small, it goes back to a depth of zero. So we're actually animating the depths of that circle um, to, uh, to a zero depth. And the zero depth is a screen. So the word virtual reality is on the screen level. And then as the depths are bigger, you know, that's a depth of 20 or something it comes out. If you make the depths negative, then they go into the screen. But we don't make the uh, a parallax work. Uh, going into the screen, it looks funny because it's sort of negative parallax. Now these things on the right, uh, or well, in this case on the right, they're uh, indicators, markers to say, hey, you've gone too far. And even one more step, as soon as we've, we're now really too far, it's just gone yellow. There's nothing else out there. So this is us moving our head, uh, angle of 150 degrees. So this is at negative, or sorry, at 75. And if we come along to the other marker over here, this is at negative 75. And when that marker hits the center of the of, of this side, then we're capturing an event saying that we're out of range and we're changing the background color. So we'll go into the code and see that. We also specify a distance. So over here on the left, a distance, and that's a distance between these markers, between that one marker and, and this marker. So uh, of 400 pixels. So if you've got a lot of content to see, you can you know adjust that accordingly. And you can put content so it goes all the way around the head, but at the moment we're looking at an angle of 150. Uh, here's the parallax effect, so that's a percentage of the depth that it will uh, move um, based on the distance and over so many angles, so over 60 degrees. So as you can see, as, as we move to one side, do you see the parallax? All of a sudden it kicks in, so let's try that again. So it gets big and I move and I get parallax and then the parallax stops. Uh, maybe what we can do is uh, we can examine that. But anyway, um, it's sort of only operating the parallax over a little bit of a distance. In general, parallax happens when you move side by side. And I suppose it happens as you spin your head as well, but you don't want it to parallax forever. <laughs> you know, as you're spinning your head, it's prim primarily a side by side uh, thing. Okay, so we're centering that on the stage, all that stuff. Let's go into the code and take a look then. Uh, we'll start at the beginning. We'll go right back up to the top here. We're in Zim 6.8.0. And 
and we're in a full template, so it's stretching out a full window. And zoom VR. So we start off with some proportion here. Uh, it's not really part of the VR, but it's so that we, we've got a bunch of circles. Uh, we've got six circles that have indexes from 0 to 5. So here's six circles uh, from 0 to 5, and this is uh, Zim proportion. And what we're saying is for the depth, we would want to animate that depth up to uh, 20 for the first item and only up to five for the, the fifth item. And the first item is the big ring in the back. Uh, the bigger rings are at the back and then they become smaller. So it's a little strange because really the smaller one's farther away. So the big ring in the back is going to animate to a depth of 20 and uh, the small uh, dot, the, the black dot or dark dot, is going to animate only to a depth of five. And we're going to animate the size as well. So the depth doesn't and it does not change the size, it only changes the shift. We went through this in Flash where the depth also changed, like the, the uh, Z, sorry, the Z value also changed the size and it just became a bit tricky to work with. You'd have to you know, run this thing and then you go, oh, man, that's the wrong size at this depth and you'd have to go back in and scale it. In the end, I think it might be just easier to keep those two independent. And that does offer some advantages doing that, but as a first stage here into um, into a Z, I don't, I don't think Zim is really going to go, <laughs> despite it starting with the letter Z, is going to go into X, Y, and Z, like full 3D stuff. Um, but anyway, the, we have a depth property. So uh, scale also needs to be provided, and we're saying that outer one will scale 2.1, whereas the inner one will scale 1.2, and then all the other rings in between will be um, scaled proportionally, hence proportion. And this allows us to sort of set up what we want. It's a base min, base max, target min, target max. As soon as you do that a couple times, all of a sudden it becomes very easy to apply proportion. There's also proportion damp, which we use quite often to uh, apply damp dampening. And it's similar, there's also Zim Damp, which is has a sort of a similar system where we uh, convert the values later. So we'll be converting these values later. All right, so we prepare the content. It's just a container. We're making it half the stage width and the stage height. And that means that when we center um, our circles, we've got some circles, when we center those circles on into the container, they'll be centered right on that left-hand side uh, eye, <laughs> I guess, channel. Okay, um, and here we are making circles uh, with an outer radius of 50. The true is the circles is, is just a, a thing we use circles so often to promote Zim that we just threw them into the frame, made it a little bit easier, and you can make Zim circles that too. It's just a quick, uh, a quick method to, to do that. And it initially made a shape, a single shape, and, and drew circles in that single shape, a single Zim shape. Uh, what the true does is says uh, make them independent, so now each of those circles is a, a Zim circle that we can control independently. So that's what that does. We're centering the circles on the content, we're making a label, and we are centering that. It's a good idea to center the regs just um, to make sure a center reg of the objects that we're using VR on will help with parallax. So if you don't, if you, if you top left corner registration, uh, parallax doesn't look correct. So you want to center that. We're caching the text as well because as we move this around, if we move, it's moving and sort of um, using a swiper and it's it's slowing down, it's damping. And in that slowdown period, it kind of jitters a little bit. It goes back and forth as it's redrawing that vector. Um, and it doesn't do that if you cache it. And let's see what else. We're putting that up a little bit higher. We've also got a depth of zero. It will have a depth of zero by default, so we didn't have to put that in there. But that's our new depth um, chainable method. So that's a chainable method, much like move and pose and, and so forth. Help. Ska. 
Now here we are looping through the circles. The circles are a container, so we can loop through a container by just saying loop through the circles. Each time we're given a circle, we're given i and a total. We don't really need that if we're just setting the depth of each of those circles to zero to start. But if we want, let's see what it looks like if we, instead of setting, well, tell you what, let's comment, we'll keep that there. We'll set the depth of zero and let's just show you what it looks like with a depth of zero. So instead of doing all this stuff for VR, let us just say new VR and we'll just add the content like that dot uh, center on the stage like so and we'll comment out this stuff for later. So now this is what VR is. Give us a new VR and please um, use this content and it will VR will then um, uh, clone that content into a right hand channel and also set all of the depths uh, move them over in the X proportionally to their depths. Okay since all of our depths are at zero Here's what we see. Oh, also let's, uh, the animation's messing that up, so let's just comment out the animation as well. And here's what we see there. Okay, so uh, do we have, oh, we have no swiping now because we have no angle. So we commented out all of this stuff, which means we can't swipe it. Fine. So there it is, centered on the stage. That's what they look like. Now, if we bring in depth like so and comment out that one. So now what we're doing is each time we loop through the circles, we're taking the total minus i, which is uh, six circles minus i. The first i is zero. So that's your big ring on the outside. Big ring on the outside is zero, and then they go up to five. So zero on the outside, that's um, going to be uh, zero. So the total is six minus zero would be six times three is a depth of 18. So the outside circle is 18. The next one would be six minus one, which would be five, which would be 15. So it'd be 18, 15, 12, etc., right down to whatever that is. Uh, if this were, it'd be three, right down to three. So we refresh here. And this is the depth shift that we're talking about. Well, let's make that a little bit bigger so we can see it. We'll go up to 100 on that and refresh here. There we go. So there's no shift here at the center. And then we're shifting each one by three more than the last one. And that ends up uh, looking like that. And when we view those with two eyes, our eyes try and make sense of that. And they become, this becomes very 3D. It's very nice. It comes out like a tube uh, right at you. Okay, if we were to shift in the negative, you can imagine what that would do. Where are we shifting here? Proportion. I don't know, do we just put a negative in front of that, probably? Uh, let's see what that looks like. It shifts the other way, and this appears to go into the screen um, behind this one, So, which would be broken a little bit. We'd want to bring this thing up above it, otherwise uh, it looks a bit odd. This is actually um, at zero, and these ones are behind it. So anyway, we don't want to do that. But we will leave that one there, and then let's bring some of this stuff back in. And instead of animating, we'll, we'll kind of take it easy. We'll just have these tubes showing, and we'll show you what that looks like. So we'll bring this stuff back. Like so. We'll get all that stuff back and refresh. We've got no animation. And uh, there's what it looks like. So no animation. As I swipe, you can see that we still have parallax. So that's the parallax that's doing. And now you can really see the, the parallax only moves between certain degrees. Right? You see that? And then as and then it just kind of shifts along without parallax. And you can change that so that it's more. But really, by the time your head has moved into this position, you're kind of ready to look at this thing. You know? Um, and so that's all right. So there it is moving. You can see that, um, you know, we got that working. Great. Let's see what it would look like uh, with just parallax. So that means we set the angle to zero here. If we set the angle to zero and refresh, then all we're seeing is that parallax, like so. And we can increase our parallax 
but that's what we would see beating in our head. And that looks great. You know, we're in our head as we move our head back and forth. This tube kind of like is is moving as well. Uh, looks pretty cool. Um, even with no parallax, zero, this looks uh, really neat. You know, and this is how we started off, and it looked great. You know, as this is sticking out at you, and you're going, "Whoa, really cool." Let's try what it looks like with no parallax and bring back the angle. Uh, I think it was at 150 degrees, which means 75 degrees on each side. So we refresh that. Now our depth is still here, and it moves without parallax. Okay, so we'll bring back the parallax though. That set at three. And there's the angle that the parallax works through. Here's the distance. Okay, no problem there. There's a couple more things we can look at. Here are the, the parameters. You can change the damping. For the outer damping of the movement, we've got that set to 0.5, which is a, a, faster, um, a faster reaction than usual because we don't want people to get a bit... Uh, we, as they turn their head, we don't want this thing to lag. It then just makes you motion sickness, sort of. So you might even turn that right off and you've got instant um, instant feedback. And then damping is, uh, we've still kept the lag on the damping. It just seems nicer. It's fine. Uh, that's the parallax damp, sorry. Start angle. So where, what angle do you want to start with? Negative parallax is set to um, false by default. And that means um, if the depth is less than zero, it won't produce parallax. Boundary markers. I like the boundary markers. We had those set so that you'd have to set them to true, but in the end, uh, they look pretty cool. So here, here's what the boundary markers, we, we saw them. If we set them to false, then we've got no boundary markers. I think they help you realize that, oh, indeed, we're, um, we're approaching a boundary, and then this is when that boundary sort of said, ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So anyway, if I refresh now, we've got no boundary markers. Now, mind you, we do have the warning yellow. That That's not too bad either, doing... That. I'll show you how, how that was done. Just a bit. So there's boundary markers. We'll bring those back. And what else we got here? Uh, the swiper. So if you don't want a swiper, swiper. <laughs> swiper colon false. So now we have no swiper. Can't swipe, but this would still work. Uh, what we've done is disabled the swiper in the in the helmet. So when you've got this in your device, uh, it doesn't really matter. So at that point, we said, well, we may as well make it by default having the swiper on the computer because other, otherwise you can't see this move, you can't test it, that kind of thing. So we default to the swiper true, and by default it will, or actually it always will stop working. It conflicts with the the helmet movement, so you don't want to run both those at the same time. Um, if we come on down here, here's the animation of the circle. Should we take a look at that? We'll bring back the swiper exposed to true, and we'll bring back the animation of the circles to talk about it. We're looping through the VR content left. So we have a left uh, channel and a right channel. Um, so how it works is VR is a container, and in that is a left and right container. Uh, you know, a container called left, so VR.left is a container on the left, and that is masking what you can see in the left, your content. And the content is vr.content left. So that represents your original content. The vr.content right is the clone of your original. And in each case, since we have to animate the circles within there individually, we've got to animate both sides. And so we're using left and right, or content left and content right. We're saying get child at one, that represents the circles because the label is get child at zero. And then um, as we loop, we are calling animate circle in both cases. So we're looping through the left and the right. Here's animate circle. We receive the circle that we're, we're getting through. So this will be all of the circles on the left and then all of the circles on the right. And we get our I each time, our index. So now we're going to animate each circle, and we're animating that based on the index. So we're going to animate the depth property. Uh, objects now, uh, display objects now in Zim have a depth property. We decided not to go with a Z property. That just says too much. I think we'd have to scale it as we did the Z. So this is a depth property, just indicating what depth it is at. And that depth property is used by VR to shift 
um, the x. So if you set an x of something, it's going to be shifted a little bit um, because of this depth. So we're animating the depth property, but we're converting the, um, we're using this one up here, depth and size, these proportions. When we're at the zero circle, we're going to animate to 20. When we're at the five circle, we'll animate to five in terms of the depth. See how easy that is? So the depth we want to set is, this is our proportion. Um, we're going to convert, if i is zero, then it's going to animate it to, to uh, whatever we said, 20. Okay, and depth, or whatever it was, is it 20? <laughs> yes, 20. The reason why we kept these up here instead of down where we were animating is that we might want to loop through the circles and apply the depth there, so I just kind of put them both up to the top. Oh, reminds me, we've still got that on. Let's turn it back to a depth of zero there, bring it back down here. So that's animating the depth. We also want to animate the scale, and we do the same thing. So when i is zero, it's going to be the scale of 2.1, when that's what we're animating to, and when i is um, five, that's the little dot, we're not, we're not scaling it up as much, because the dot we want to appear follow, farther uh, back. So here's what that looks like. Whoa, I think we forgot to change the size of it. So the dot, even though it's the fifth element, like on top, right? It's stacked on top of these other ones, so we can see it. Uh, even though it's the fifth element, it's actually the thing that's be the farthest. So uh, we want to keep you know, the depth to be small, whereas these depths are coming out at us, the, the, the rings and the source scales bigger. OK. Now, you might want to take a peek at what that looks like if we don't do the scale. It's just uh, we're only going to convert the depth and refresh here. So do you see what's happening? As, as it gets deeper, this is zero. As it gets deeper, these things shift, and these ones are shifting less. And this one's shifting more. And because of that shift, it causes us to, in a sense, see, we need to say, oh, that's got to be out closer to us for us to focus on this. And our eyes kind of go a little bit cross-eyed or anti-cross-eyed, I'm not sure which way. <laughs> and that's what gives us um, the depth. Okay, neat. Um, we do that in three seconds. You can make that bigger or smaller, make it really, really fast. You want to see what 300 milliseconds looks like? Oh boy, how are you ready? Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. Okay, whoa. Uh, we also want to set this back. Instead of 100, we have that 50. Otherwise, parallax and stuff will start messing up. There we go, boom, ba, boom, ba. So that would be fun to see, oh my goodness. All right, let's move along here. So that was three seconds we had. Coming on down, we've got a resize. So um, the resize will make it, slow that down. The resize makes it so that that fits in, in the boxes still. Okay. Um, and then what else is there? There's a couple timeouts. What are they doing? Here's a timeout after one second. We'll say VR remove the label. So you don't want to just go in and if you if you just remove child label or uh, remove or label dot remove from label dot parent, you know that kind of thing. You'd take only the left hand label first of all. Not only that, but all of the calculations that are going in behind would still be operating on that label. So you want to use remove label, and label is is right here. There it is. It's the thing that we added and we centered it on the content. Okay, so this is a reference to the 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 content side. So that's what you do. You pass in the original reference, the original object and we're going to VR remove it and watch what happens now. So we save this and refresh. After one second, the label goes away and no longer calculates anything and it takes away both of those. So you should use that. The position is the same thing. Uh, we're, we're actually um, moving the X position, we're shifting it. So if you, uh, we're shifting it based on a start X. So when we set up the VR, Everything's given a start X, and then we shift based on that. So if you manually or physically, whatever, <laughs> physically, if you manually move something in there, 
um, it's just going to go back to where it was before because the start X has not been changed. So you could you could manually change the VR start X properties of you know the left hand side and the right hand side, but uh, and that that would do it. But you you shouldn't really do that. You should just use position because that's what position does. So here we are getting the in the circles we're getting the second or third circle and we're going to uh, position it to an X position of 50 and you could also position the Y position if, if, if you wanted to. And we'll just do the X so this is X and Y and that will happen after a second and so we refresh here and there they go. So now the depth is still there, parallax is still there as we move things but um, the uh, position has been handled by VR. <laughs> Looks kind of funny doesn't it? Okay, so let's not do that. Here is this thing called an adjuster. So uh, that's cool. We, I think the adjuster and the swiper might cause problems together. I actually tried that. So we'll turn off the swiper and uh, the adjuster would be probably, well, it could be used in either, I suppose. I should make sure that those do work together. I'll do that later. But anyway, an adjuster looks like this. It's a pop-up that gives you the ability to change. Right now, you see those two circles. That's that's here. That's the center of your, your sides. Um, if you adjust this, and let's bring them closer together. If you're a kid, you might want to bring them closer together and hit OK. And now they're closer together. And if you make them farther apart and hit OK, now they're farther apart. So that's... That's your adjuster. This one resets it and hit OK like that. So um, in theory, it should be that that's your, your distance between your eyes. So you can hold your fingers up to your eyes and then put them on your mobile device and then use the adjuster to um, actually get that. But when I did that, I, I couldn't see the 3D as well as when I just it was at the default for like an iPhone 6 kind of thing. Um, you know, so it's going to be up to you. You can play around with that. One one place where it's handy is if if we're full screen here and I refresh. Oh, did I refresh? No, let me refresh here. If we're full screen. There they are. There's a, a cross-eyed technique where you can take a, you can go cross-eyed and look at these. But there's no way that I'm going to be cross-eyed this far. So if we take our adjuster and bring them closer to where I could be cross-eyed and hit OK. Now, uh, you can try this at home. Uh, look at this thing and go cross-eyed. It sometimes helps if they don't um, cross one another, so I'll bring it a little bit wider. There, that's nice. Okay, so look at this and go cross-eyed. You can do it. If you go cross-eyed, you're going to eventually get to a point where um, those two images come together and you can start to see depth, which is neat. Okay, so... Um, back together and refresh here. Uh, let's take the adjuster. I'll do a reset on the adjuster. Okay. All right. So that's the adjuster and you can control parts of the adjusters like um, access them and, you know, rewrite the, the label and that kind of stuff. So that's available to you. Here's our boundary out and our boundary in events. At which point, when we get a boundary out, we're setting frame, the, the color of the frame to yellow. And when we go back in, we're setting it back to the, the, light, the light gray that it was. You can also access a certain, we've got E in here. We can say um, something like if E dot boundary double equals a left, then we will do that. Otherwise, we're not going to. So this would only put the yellow on the left boundary and not on the right. So we'll save that and refresh here. And as I oh, we turned off the turned off the swiper, true. And a refresh here. And as I swipe to the left now, bing, there it's yellow. But if I swipe to the right, there's no yellow. So that's what happens with no boundary. You know, you're sort of like. Uh, where am I? And your head's moving and your head's moving. Whereas this way, you know, your head's moving, your head's moving. And you kind of know that something like maybe that's it. <laughs> you can make it turn red if you really wanted to. 
Okay, so that's that stuff. Um, neat, huh? Isn't this just like wonderful? I love this. So this is Zim VR. Let's uh, just pop out and take a look at the docs for that. So uh, we'll make a new tab and we'll go to Zim and we will hit docs. And should we make these docs a bit bigger for you? Okay. Here they are. Zoom in on them and type in VR. So there's all your stuff. Um, this gives you details about how to make the make the thing. Gives you notes on it. It's mostly what I've been talking about. Uh, there's the example, the live example. If you want to try that out, zimjs.com/code/vr. And here's a nice example. It's a different example than than what you know we've been looking through. It's just got a couple rectangles and stuff. And it, it goes through all of the different settings. So that's neat. It tells you how to access things. Well, one thing we didn't take a look at, I'm not sure it's here either. Let's um, go down. There's your parameters, angles, distance, all that kind of stuff set out. And your methods. Register. This is the one we didn't look at. Register an item. So normally you would just add everything to VR at the start. And that's probably all you need to do. But if in time you need to add something else, to the VR, then you would add it to the content just like normal, like with an add to or a center or whatever. You can put that anywhere you want in the content on that one side and then register that item. So even if that item has lots of children, like it's a container with all sorts of children, by registering that item, it will uh, recursively go through all those children, take a look at any of the depths. So you, you would set the depths yourself before you register it. When you register, it takes a look at any of those depths. It move, it, it clones the thing over to the other side. It moves all of the things, etc. So that allows you to add something. And then there's the remove. Uh, we looked at the remove position, show adjuster, height adjuster, resize. These things have various properties. It, it's kind of cool. Everything that gets cloned um, and the, the originals. Um, get a VR match property that will, so on the left hand side, if you ask for, um, the, the, say, the labels VR match, it would give you the VR match, or sorry, the label on the right hand side. And if you ask the right hand side's label, what is the VR match, it would give you the label on the left hand side. So that's neat. And you can find out what channel an object is on, etc. So anyway, look through all that stuff. Uh, left and right are your containers. And then content left and content right are the content in those. You can also access the boundary left and boundary right if you want to hide one of them or change them. <coughs> Here's your events for boundary out, boundary in. Um, also a saved and a closed for the adjuster. The adjuster has all of uh, a whole bunch of things. There's the backing, the label, the strip, the slider, so you can access those properties as well. All right, I think that that is good. We've been taking a look at virtual reality here. Oh, VR at what's bubbling. So uh, please go out and get yourself a $20 headset. Um, come back in here, and if you're developing in Zim, make some of this yourself. We're about to create a really cool game. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. So we'll talk to you later. I am Inventor Dan Zen at zimjs.com. Have a great day or night. Ciao.